Algebra 1 Honors, Lesson 2.1, Rational Numbers on the Number Line, and Lesson 2.2, Adding and Subtracting Rational Numbers. So, hopefully these are not challenging lessons. You should have seen these before, but a rational number has the first five letters, the word ratio. So it's any number, 2 over 1, which we just called 2, 3 over 5, negative 9 over 11, any number that we can write as a ratio, something above something. A calculator is pretty handy at this. Um, natural numbers count naturally. 1, 2, 3. Whole numbers start with 0. 1, 2, 3. Integers go both ways. Includes the negative numbers, really, is the way to look at it. They're all rational numbers, because all of them can be put over 1. Yes, even 0. 0 over 1 equals 0. If you don't believe me, or you don't think so, check on your calculator. So now, when first adding and subtracting these, it's a little tricky. People need to see it on a number line. Name the coordinates of the points on the number line. Well, here's 0, and here's 10. So you have to look and think. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right, it's going up by 2s. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. Negative. It's going down by negative 2s. So this is negative 8. This is negative 2. This is 4, 10, 12, 14. This is 16. Now graph the following set of numbers, integers that are greater than negative 3 and less than 4. So we go 1, 2, 3, and we label it, and we put an open dot, less than 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, open dot. Go from there. That is the set of no integers that are greater than negative 3 and less than 4. Now that's wrong now that I read it, which is important to read. Integers greater than negative 3 and less than 4. So they actually can't equal negative 3 and 4. Well, then we're looking at just integers like that. You might say, well, no, why can't it equal 4? It would say less than or equal to 4. It would say integers greater than or equal to negative 3. It does not. So now we got some actual rational numbers here. Negative 4 thirds. 1 third, 2 third, negative 1. Negative 4 thirds is right here. This is tricky stuff. You're going to have to practice it. That's how a fraction works. If there's three pieces, we take the second one if we want two thirds. If you're not sure how to get five thirds, just think zero, one third, two third, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds. Next one, of course, would be six-thirds, so on and so on. What's an absolute value? That's the distance away from zero. It's always positive because distance, by definition, is always positive. How far is it to your house? It's 10 miles. How far is it from your house here? It's 10 miles. At no time do we ever say distance is negative. So absolute value is one of the easiest things to learn. It's also one of the most important you'll use in higher level math. You just say, hey, if it's already positive, great. If it's negative, make it positive. it. Now you get to play with it with inside of an equation a little bit. x is 4 minus negative 3 minus 2. 4 minus negative 5. 4 minus 5. Negative 1. At which point you'll say, whoa, 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 I thought it couldn't be negative. It's not. What's inside the absolute value is positive. There's still a whole equation you have to deal with. So here we get 4 minus 2 times negative 3 
plus 5, 4, plus 6, plus 5, equals 10, plus 5, equals 15. And over here, 8 minus 3 times negative 3 minus 4. I really should make these absolute values bigger. It's a little bit easier to see them. 8 minus negative 9 minus 4. 8 minus negative 13 equals 8 minus 13 equals negative 5. And onwards. So now that we kind of know how to work them out, we did a little lapse of values, how do we add and subtract them? You can use a number line. I am not a huge fan. If this works for you, go ahead and use it. I kind of just look at them and say, yeah, we have a negative 3, we have a positive 4. Not a negative 4, so let's just say this is 0. 1, 2, this is negative 3. Plus negative 4 means go 1, 2, 3, 4 further. That's your answer. The number line is used to show conceptually what's going on when we add negative numbers because a lot of people are not handy with the negative numbers. 2.5, 1, 2.5. Negative 3.5, 1, 2, 3.5. Negative 1. Of course, the best way to do this is on a calculator, but you should know what you're talking about. We could also use absolute value to help with adding signed numbers. To add numbers with the same sign, add their absolute values. Some is the same sign that we started with. So we just say, oh, that's 11 plus 7, since they're both negative 18. And then since they were both negative, we make it negative 18. Here they're both negative, so we just say 8 plus 15 is 23, since they were both negative, the final answer is negative 23. Personally, don't recommend that one all that much. If they have different signs, subtract which one's bigger. 12 minus 8 is 4. Positive was bigger. We're done. 37 minus 13 is 24. Negative was bigger. Done. To subtract rational numbers, add them. Uh, at its additive inverse is really what we're doing. So this is really negative 8 plus negative 15. And I am a big fan of changing everything to pluses. Not all the time, but when it gets confusing. 8 and 15 is 23. Since they're both negative, negative 23. 6 plus negative, negative 7. Negatives cancel out. We get 13. Negative 12 plus negative, negative 25. Negatives cancel out. Subtract 13. Bigger number is positive. We're done. 5 plus negative 19. They're opposite. Subtract 19 minus 5 is 14. Bigger one is negative. We're done. During a five day period, a telecommunication company stock price went up. Pardon me, down. Find the change in price of the stock. Well, it's 17.82. Minus 15.36. So we subtract. Six. Four. Two. So it went down. 2.46. Or. Negative 2.46. Now you might say wait a minute. That doesn't cover anything we just did. You had two numbers just subtracted them. The bigger one was positive. The point is, when we get a word problem, you have to apply some intelligence to it. Did the price go up? Did it go down? If it went down, do I call it negative? Or do I just say it went down? There's a lot going on. Don't get hung up on just pure mathematics. Use your intelligence. And that's what teachers are there for. Good luck. And as always, happy mathing.